Ambassador Khalilzad, over the past several days, protests have erupted in the Middle East over a film called The Innocence of Muslims, which appears to insult Prophet Muhammad. How serious are these protests in terms of damaging the U.S. reputation among Muslims? Well, it's uh, a, a very serious uh, issue and incident. There has been loss of life. Uh, there has been the killing of several U.S. diplomats, including an ambassador. Uh, the, uh, we still don't know exactly uh, what has happened uh, with regard to the film. Uh, it was obviously a, something diabolical, potentially, that uh, using America's uh, 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 freedom to do something that uh, could damage American relations with the Muslim world. Um, uh, 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 and there have been uh, extremists on the other side in the Muslim world who have taken advantage of the uh, feelings of the people about uh, Islam and Muhammad, uh, the Prophet, and as well as the, uh, the, the, the limitations with regard to the understandings of the freedoms uh, that are enshrined here in the United States, uh, uh, and, 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 and therefore uh, 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 using that to, uh, to damage U.S. relations with that region and U.S. standing with the people uh, of the area. Some have speculated that uh, these protests might have been fueled by uh, religious radicals uh, and from what we hear the attack on the consulate in Benghazi, Libya may have been pre-planned. Uh, how credible are these allegations? Is uh, Al-Qaeda or other radical organizations, are they trying to take advantage of the situation? Uh, with regard to the particular uh, attack uh, against the consulate in Benghazi that uh, took the life of the ambassador and several others, uh, uh, still too soon to know exactly what has happened. Uh, usually with these incidents there is a fog of war and some initial reports may or may not turn out to be correct. Uh, um, but uh, th th there's no doubt that the, that the extremists uh, would take advantage of any opportunity to advance their agenda to damage U.S. relations with the uh, peoples and countries of the area. Uh, and and uh, um, I think s uh, some damage has already been done uh, uh, in terms of reactions here, although the reaction to what has happened there here has been rather limited by comparison, uh, but nevertheless uh, uh, the, the, uh, it has had its effects uh, uh, in terms of the evaluation even of, the, of this uh, Arab Spring, uh, what should the United States do, what it shouldn't do, so it's, it's had an effect already. There are those who say that America's apologetic attitude toward Muslims uh, have uh, failed to reduce tensions, rather it has exacerbated them. Uh, what, if anything, can the United States do to counter uh, uh, this image among Muslims and try to reduce tensions among Muslims toward, toward the United States? Well, the best thing to do is to uh, uh, stand uh, true to uh, America's values of uh, tolerance, of democracy, of economic development, of rule of law. Uh, I think people are essentially the same everywhere. Uh, they want to have economic security, they want to have a say in terms of their political future, and they want to have, uh, uh, of course, uh, security for their families, especially in places where there is no security. And uh, uh, America has done a lot to, uh, to assist Muslims in difficult situations. Uh, look at Bosnia, look at uh, uh, Afghanistan against the Soviets. Uh, we can go on, uh, um, but uh, uh, there are forces because of the crisis of uh, Islamic civilization right now where there is a struggle going on uh, for interpreting uh, Islam for the modern day. There are s secular forces, there are moderate forces, uh, th uh, and then there are some extreme forces. And, uh, and, and one of the uh, points of difference is uh, relations with the rest of the world, uh, particularly with the West and America which is the dominant we uh, Western power right now. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, 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 
America has to uh, uh, um, be relevant and assist in the transformation of this region, especially the Middle East, which has not been working very well for the peoples of the area. During the Cold War, the American uh, uh, government uh, emphasized stability that sometimes uh, caused difficulty with the people because stability meant support for the regime because the focus was on the Soviet Union. Now there is an appreciation that what happens inside these countries, their future uh, is, is extremely important, uh, not only for the people of the area, which was the case always uh, for them, the, the, their, their countries were obviously very important. But now what happens in this region is important for the whole world uh, because uh, like Europe in the 18th, 19th and early 20th century was where uh, was the central area of difficulty for the world and from there problems uh, affected the rest of the world. Now it is this region, uh, the, the broader Middle East, uh, maybe Southwest Asia, Central Asia, uh, that is where the most difficult challenges are located and uh, its problems uh, affect the rest of the world as well. Ambassador Khalilzad, how would these demonstrations impact America's attitude policy toward Arab Spring? For instance, uh, in Syria, where the United States has supported the rebels, uh, could that support, could we see that support diminishing as a result of these protests in countries where the revolutions have succeeded? Of course, uh, uh, immediately after some of these changes that took place uh, in the so-called Arab Spring, People declared them as sort of victory for democracy and compared them to the changes in Eastern Europe in uh, 1989. Uh, and then because of this incident, uh, uh, people say, well, Arab Spring has become Arab Winter. The fact is that uh, uh, what existed before uh, did not work uh, for the people of the area. And so uh, these uh, uprisings uh, as unleashed all the forces that were suppressed. And really the struggle uh, for the future of each country and the region is underway. This is going to take a long time to work itself out. And it could go in uh, many directions. And I think the uh, relevant uh, American role is to uh, 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 do what it can uh, prudently to, uh, to assist uh, uh, the, the move towards uh, a democratic liberal evolution. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't work with, uh, with, with uh, those who are in power, such as the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. You work with them, but you, uh, you support also the, the liberal forces you, uh, so that there is competition and, and there is, uh, because there is a tendency by uh, fundamentalist parties towards monopolization and towards centralization, a bit of hostility towards the West. This is their roots. And you need to balance them and constrain them by supporting uh, liberal uh, uh, groups, that there is a check and balance system, and that uh, also that uh, there is uh, uh, alternative institutions, uh, uh, whether it's independent judiciary, uh, uh, political parties, civil society, or all active parliament, and that there is checks and balance system. In, in that way, uh, you could even encourage the evolution of some of these parties uh, perhaps to, to be more uh, democratic and more tolerant. You served as an ambassador in Iraq at the time of a very lethal insurgency. Right. And there are some concerns about the makeup of the groups that uh, uh, have rebelled uh, against the government of Bashar al-Assad. Right. Uh, who are the people, the rebels, who are fighting against uh, Mr. Assad's government? Well, there are lots of different groups, uh, and uh, there is sort of there is a political opposition uh, uh, that are mostly uh, uh, exiles, uh, uh, dead worlds, Democrats, some with Islamic uh, tendencies. Then there are inside the various uh, military groups, uh, uh, also di different uh, uh, orientations. Uh, and then there are uh, also ethnic uh, groupings. Uh, you have obviously the Kurds, uh, and, and then you have the Alawites behaving in an ethnic sectarian way, and you have the Christians. Of course, you have the large Sunni uh, um, uh, Arab uh, population. So uh, the, the, the challenge is how to, uh, to uh, limit the support uh, for the 
more extremist uh, uh, elements in the opposition, how to bring uh, the political and military opposition together to agree to a program uh, for the future of Syria that can attract some of the people who are now with the regime, uh, Alawites or Christians who are worried about their future, so that they can see themselves uh, in terms of uh, the future uh, of this uh, very important, vital country in the heart of the Middle East. And so I have been a critic uh, the, of uh, the U.S. approach so far, which is that uh, uh, we have not been sufficiently active in support uh, of the opposition, both to grow it politically uh, so that there is a vision, uh, an inclusive vision, a power-sharing vision, and that can even help with the military struggles because people gaining confidence about the future will leave the government side. And two, militarily, uh, I believe it's very important to support with lethal aid weapons and the opposition because if the U.S. doesn't, uh, then the f assistance will come f uh, from countries that will support more extremist elements so the role of the extremists will grow. And uh, without our help, without uh, sufficient support, the war would be prolonged, uh, will be good longer. And the longer the war goes on, uh, the, the more likely it is that uh, the state institutions will collapse, extremists will gain, and, 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 and it, uh, Syria could become a headache for a long time to come, uh, uh, not only for the Syrian people, for the region, uh, uh, which uh, Syria, as I said before, is an important part of, but also uh, for, for the rest of the world. You also served as an ambassador, U.S. ambassador in Afghanistan, where in recent months, uh, Afghan soldiers, we've been hearing news about Afghan so soldiers turning guns on their coalition partners. Some U.S. and other nationality soldiers have been killed uh, by Afghan government soldiers. Uh, how serious is this problem? It's very serious. Uh, it's, a, again, a very sinister, diabolical thing that shows that the adversary is a smart adversary that has uh, uh, infiltrated uh, and the security forces, uh, which has expanded rather quickly uh, as we think about the transition uh, to more Afghan self-reliance, and, and uh, is uh, causing uh, increasing uh, mistrust, therefore, between the coalition forces and the Afghan security forces. Their cooperation is so important uh, for for the success of the transition in the in the in the in the security domain, it's very important that uh, uh, the more jointness is brought uh, about by the political and military leaders of the coalition and the Afghan government, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, stands are taken clearly against such uh, action, and then appropriate uh, security measures are taken. Uh, some of which already are, to, uh, to, to check the uh, applicants who come to join the uh, armed forces, uh, security forces. Uh, it's, it, is, it is one of the more difficult challenges facing the, the, both the Afghans uh, and the coalition. And they're not only killing coalition soldiers, this uh, green on blue, they're also killing their Afghan colleagues uh, uh, as well. So this is a problem. Uh, of the infiltration, uh, uh, although there are various motives that I have uh, read about for some of the different incidents that have been studied, but clearly one of the key uh, uh, factors is infiltration by, uh, by, by uh, the uh, insurgents uh, or hostile opposition. The American troops are slated, scheduled to leave Afghanistan by 2014, but there are already signs that uh, some Americans are soured on the mission in Afghanistan sure. due to the incidents that we just mentioned. Sure. Uh, how do you see Afghanistan's future? Well, Afghanistan's future is a contingent future. Uh, it depends, in other words. It depends on uh, uh, the tr security transition, uh, building up of the Afghan forces, uh, and you're right that international uh, uh, support uh, for the mission in Afghanistan is declining. Uh, but people understand still that, uh, you know, given the problem of extremism and terror, it's important uh, uh, to persist. Uh, um, so it depends on whether the Afghan forces can be built fast enough uh, in a good way, uh, taking the problems into account so they can take on more responsibility. The, there is a plan for that by 2014.
combat responsibility will be transferred to the Afghans. Then there is also uh, the, 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 the political transition, uh, the term of the uh, president, President Karzai, uh, runs out uh, 2014. He cannot uh, run again because of the limitations put by the Constitution. So that uh, there is a political transition and uh, as smooth as possible. Uh, and then there is obviously uh, a, a regional diplomatic uh, 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 and reconciliation uh, uh, issue. Uh, the more there is a cooperative regional environment which there hasn't been as much as it should and there is no uh, reconciliation, the, the problem uh, will persist longer. And then of course there is uh, the Afghan economic underdevelopment. Uh, the, uh, Tokyo, there was a, an international conference to deal with that. Uh, and the Afghans need to make the decisions such as you know, combating corruption, improving rule of law, governance. So uh, uh, this affects not only security, these steps, the politics, but also eco uh, the economy because uh, 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 it is, uh, such steps encourages investment and put leaving their money behind rather than taking their money out. Uh, so all of this is, is uh, uh, are, are all of these are important steps uh, for the Afghans and for the international community.